welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a third year PhD student in history and African American studies at Yale. And today we are heading to the National Archives in London. I am doing research here for the summer on my dissertation and I'm gonna take you along for the day, show you what it's like actually going into an archive and to show you the ins and the outs of what it's like to be a historian in training. So I'm gonna take you along for the day. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin my archival studies, I head over to none other than the National Archives in Richmond. The National Archives is home to 32 million documents relating to the history of the United Kingdom. For historians, literary scholars, and researchers from around the world, the National Archives is the key place to study English history and English empire. And as a historian of the English Atlantic in the 17th century and the law of slavery, there is no better place for me to begin my studies. Upon arriving in the archives, you get your reader card, place your belongings into the lockers, and call up your documents. For the National Archives, you need to book a couple weeks in advance in order to get your documents delivered on time and to reserve your seat. Now comes the best part of being a historian in training. I get this manuscript document out and put it on blocks so that way I do not damage the spine. To begin, I open up a ledger from Barbados. As a social and legal historian, I'm very interested in legal language as well as the lived experiences of enslaved individuals and how it is that they are discussed in society by colonists and legislators. But before we get into the fine details of the documents, let's talk about my note-taking process. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Notion. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then you know how much I absolutely love the Notion platform for organizing myself, my studies, my businesses, and I've been using them for over three years. I started using Notion during my master's degree at Oxford, and I'm now heading into year three of my PhD where Notion is the primary hub where I keep everything that I need for my studies and my businesses. And I wanted to quickly show you how it is that I've been using Notion while in the archives. After opening up a document, I go ahead and make up a notes page with the primary source details. First, I open up my dissertation planner on Notion, which has all of my notes for the primary sources and secondary literature that will be included in my dissertation. Here I have a primary source where I have included the reference number, the archive, as well as the status of my review of the document. Then begins the more difficult work of actually transcribing the document into notions so that way I have direct quotes that I can use for the dissertation. And lastly, I have a little note section or thought section where I write down anything that I've thought of or considered while reviewing the document. If you want to download Notion for yourself, go ahead and check out the links down below, as well as the free template that I've created that you can use as your primary hub to get started organizing your life, your studies, and everything in between. Now let's get on back to the video. Now the next document that I pulled up was particularly special. This is the Journal of the Proceedings of the Governor and Councils of Barbados. Now before I get into the contents of the document, I want to talk a little bit about the handling of 17th century manuscripts. The popular connotation with archives is white gloves and conservation. However, studies have shown that it's actually more beneficial to work with a manuscript document with bare hands rather than with gloves in order to feel the texture of the paper. As you see here, our hands never actually come in contact with the actual ink and text on the paper. We only touch the corners when flipping from page to page, being careful not to tear. While other papers have been burned or lost, these documents that are collected by the National Archives are well preserved and valued, which is why it's important to follow the procedures of any archive in order to preserve their documents. It is time to head home from the archives. I am exhausted. I also just don't feel well today. I just feel really nauseous and was getting really exhausted setting the camera and doing the photos because you're also trying to get photographs that you can return to when you need to reference them in your dissertation or whatever project you're working on. And so I was taking photographs, especially of the Barbados council records. And I was just getting really tired. My back is killing me. So I'm gonna head back to London, head back to my flat and rest up. I have a very easy evening. 
and then we head to the parliamentary records office tomorrow for the parliamentary archives. This is day one, and then we will get started on day number two. Day two, I headed over to Westminster for the parliamentary archives. This was a particularly special trip because I've never been in English parliament before. To begin the day, I went through security check and then headed into Westminster Hall where I had to meet with a guide who would bring me up to the parliamentary archives. Then began my review of the long calendar of parliamentary acts from the 15th century to the 18th century. This was one of those long, hot days in the archive that I will remember for years to come. For six straight hours, I pored over the general index for the House of Lords and looked at the various parliamentary acts that were passed throughout the various reigns of English monarchs. At the beginning of the day, I set myself a few search terms, but quickly ditched that list in order to look through every single entry in the index. In my notes, I recorded various entries on Africa, the Royal African Company, the colonies in North America, as well as laws related to bastardy and other entries related to the reign of Charles II. For the purpose of my dissertation, I'm interested in evolving legal language driven by parliament around the law of slavery. And by the end of my second day in the archives, I was utterly drained, but ready to come back tomorrow for more. On my second day in the parliamentary archives, I returned to the long calendars in order to see the various entries based on what Parliament was discussing on any particular day and session. And afterward, I got to look at these 17th century scrolls. These scrolls largely contain different court proceedings and have been tattered over time and require delicate care in order to maneuver. As you'll see here, I use various weights and I'm touching the outside of the scroll, making sure not to touch the ink in order to preserve the document. And while these particular petitions and court proceedings were not particularly useful for my research, they were incredibly cool to look at. done with my third day in the archives, second day at the parliament archives, and let's do a little recap on what I found, what I saw, what I didn't see. So the records that I pulled up at the National Archives were those on Barbados. There was one ledger in particular that had some kind of corroborative entries, but not enough to really support the entire thesis of the dissertation, which is really looking at the origin of slave law. However, it does talk a little bit about commodification and, and especially the status of mixed race children in society. And then the second document I looked at was the governor's records. And those were really hard to read. I took several hundred images of the pages and was essentially trying to get a general synopsis of what is inside. I was trying to read as I was going, but that was the day that I was feeling quite ill. And so I ended up leaving early and didn't get to read actively while I was there in the way that I might have if I was feeling better. Yesterday, I went to the parliamentary archives and I was looking at the House of Lords journal index and that was very fruitful. There were several entries where Parliament under Charles II is talking about a series of things, including things such as like bastardy law, law around vagabonds or vagrants, and also there's some discussion about the formation of the Royal African Company. I really wanted to find the Royal African Company records and other things of that sort because I have a digitization of the original charter, so I know who is listed on the board and who is the initial group of stockholders, but I would really like to see how those investments evolve over time. And then Today, I looked at the House of Commons journal index. I also was looking at the House of Lords, like general entries. It starts with Henry VIII and it shows like each individual monarch and then on a particular date, what parliament was discussing. And again, it's not substantial evidence for the general thesis. However, it is supportive in terms of like little line items of evidence. So for example, 
I noticed a lot that under Elizabeth in particular, there's a lot of discussion around the poor laws and around vagrancy, which makes sense historically. However, that's something that I really want to dig into. And so there's a lot of literature on the poor laws and whatnot that I think I personally need more time with. Essentially, today just gave me a little bit more support and a bit more of a push to know that I need to go back into the secondary literature a bit more. And so that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And I feel very behind on YouTube and everything else in my life. However, my research feels very much on track. And I'm going to be spending the weekend really looking at the secondary literature again, and just seeing what else is there. Next week, I have an appointment at the Parliamentary Archives. I also have an appointment at the National Archives and I'm going to try to set up an appointment at the Bodleian and the Weston at Oxford. So to next week's going to be another busy archive week. It's been really fruitful so far. I am exhausted. I forgot how tiring being in the archive can be, mostly because it's really silent. It's really quiet. And I don't know why, but I feel really weird listening to music or listening to anything while I'm working because I really want to be with the document and really focused. And so it just requires a lot of focus and it's, it's a bit draining. Some of the documents I was opening up and realizing that there's just so much there and I wanted to get a general synopsis to establish the dissertation prospectus of so the proposal, not necessarily for the actual dissertation, so to speak, because ultimately I'm going to need to come back and I'm going to need to spend like several weeks in the parliamentary archives in order to fully grasp what's there. And there's just so much that needs to be read and studied. And so right now I'm trying not to get hung up on wanting to read and look at everything and instead get kind of a good general overview of what's in the archives. So that way I can write in my prospectus that I know what's there and that I know what I'm looking for and that I can say that it is feasible. And so that's kind of the plan at the moment and it was really good. I really like the archivist at the Parliamentary Archives in particular because it's a much smaller archive. There's like two or three people that you interact with in particular. There's only four seats and it's pretty intimate and pretty small and there's just a lot there. And so I am really excited to have found some things. There's just so much that I need to look at for the dissertation. And so I'm now very seriously considering moving here. I knew that I was going to have to come back for at least like three months for the research. But now I'm thinking that a more permanent move might be the way to go. So we'll see. There's there's just so much that I want to do and I want to dig into and I can't really do that all in this trip because it's it's just too much. But really good sources for the prospectus. So that way I can go back to my advisor, I can go back to the department and say there are documents, I know where to look, I know generally what's there and I think that that's all really supportive and really positive. So that's my little archive update. I will not be in the archives tomorrow, I'm gonna have a nice kind of chill day. I am hoping to work co-work with Elizabeth. I'm gonna go ahead and shower and get ready for some calls and then prepare for bed. So I will see you tomorrow.